mediocre minds. And so when you find yourself being attacked, you know, try to try to not be arrogant and think that automatically means that you're thinking beyond what others are capable of thinking, but you might be. But the bigger lesson is whenever you go 1% outside of the orthodoxy, you should expect to be attacked. Do it anyway. And that's why you can't do it inside a system that's designed to do what it does, which is prevent you from changing it. The only way these systems evolve, there's a little bit of evolution in them. They slowly evolve over time, these bureaucracies. is when the old guard retires and dies. And then the middle ground who's been holed back, uh, for a moment, but when, what happens? The middle guard becomes the old guard and does the same thing to the new middle guard who does the same thing to the new entrance into it. But who should be the ones that are most likely to be expanding our understanding of these difficult things? The young, the people with less preconceptions is the way like I like educated to the point of I understand why everybody believes this, but I'm I'm still willing to go outside the norm. In the end, I really want you to take this as my final message to you today. And I don't know if you've ever heard it quite put like this. I've never put it like this before, though I've said different versions of it. You control only what you control. That I know you've heard me say. Well, here's the next part of it. Most people think that's not enough. When you talk like I'm doing today, when you tell people, you, you, you know, these are rules for how society works, and you're not going to change them from the inside. You have to go over and be a rebel and make little tiny improvements. It's a point where enough people do it that we drag society with us. Like it feels very disempowering. So when I tell you you only control what you control, and then you think about, well, what do I really control? The reason you feel like that's not enough is because of where your mind is. Your mind is on all the things you don't control instead of all the things you do control. Stephen Covey, right? I could have included him today. Circle of control and circle of influence, right? And circle of concern. Most people spend the vast majority of their life in their circles of concern where they have no control. They don't even have much or any influence. And their life, therefore, is wasted. Their dash burns from both ends and gets shorter and shorter until they're in a box. They never actually change anything in the world, no matter how hard they try, just like the fly that I started this show talking about, the fly in the window. He had a week to live. He lived 48 hours in a window pushing on the glass. Sadly, that's how most people live their lives. But here's the rest of this. But it's more than most can handle. Simply doing the most you can with what you do control is more than most people ever could do. You have so many control mechanisms of controlling things in your life. You have so much you could be doing. You have so much impact you could be making. Your potential is bigger than your time. Your potential is greater than your time here. You have a potential to do so much with the limited aspects of what you control if you fully worked those things only. If you ignored all the noise, all the static, all the bullshit and focus only on the signal, you have a monumentous, lifelong series of tasks ahead of you that can impact the world in incredible ways. But most people won't. And it's weird. It's weird. It's because they don't think what they can do is big enough to matter. So they spend their time worrying about things they don't control. It's the greatest deception that's ever been pulled on humanity. And why would they want to do that? You know, whenever I say they, people are like, who are they? There's no they. There's only people. Yeah, yeah. If you don't think there's a they, you have never read a fucking history book that you actually comprehended in your life. They are the people that tell you you will give them a tribute of your income or they will put you in jail and they will. And most of the people that will do the actual coming out, getting you and putting you in the jail are not they. They're the minions of they. And the people that control society love, they love you focusing on things you don't control. Because 
there's 300 plus million people in or something like 330 million, probably like 340 million now with all the uh, new arrivals, right? 340 million people in this country. What is 10% of that number living the way that we're talking about look like to the power elite? That's 34 million people laser focused only on shit that they can control, trying to solve problems that they define for themselves. Because what might be a big problem for me, something I feel like I want to work on, you might have a total, that's fine. There's more problems than there are people, right? So the fact that you're working on problem B and I'm working on A and, and Bill's working on problem Z and Stymie here is working on problem X, Y, Z and, and, you know, Bonnie Blue is working on problem one, two, three, A, B, C. Like, that's fine. That's great. But it is a total disruption. It would be the most disruption that the status quo has ever felt. 10% of people focused only on what they control, doing what they can to solve problems. Ignoring all the people that say they can't, all the people that won't say it doesn't work, right? Remember the old proverb? Those who say a thing that can't be done should not get in the way of the people actively doing it. Yeah? I think that's a Chinese proverb, right? If we had 34 million people in America doing that, the road to anarchy would not be very long. Real anarchy, not the crap they talk about on TV with, you know, teenagers in black suits throwing friggin' Molotov cocktails. That's not anarchy. Anarchy is where society evolves to such a point that the need for rulers is dissolved into obsolescence. That's what it is. That's what real anarchy is. Anarchy is a society rising to such a state with such maturity that it drives rulers into obsolescence. Is it possible? I don't know, but it's worth shooting for, isn't it? Whatever we would come up with is better than what we have. If we can come up with any way to solve problems that are currently not solved, by the way, that doesn't involve stealing from people and using force on people, then it's better. Then it's better. If it does as good a job at addressing the problem without force and theft, then it's better. It could be equal and still be better because we remove force, right, and coercion and theft. But it's not going to happen in your lifetime. You're an ant. Think of yourself more as a bee than an ant for this. A bee in its entire life will make a little thimble full of honey. But all the bees working together will fill the whole hive up. And the bee knows its purpose. Let me tell you what your purpose is not. It's a good way to figure out what your purpose is. Your purpose is not to be a pawn in the system. Your purpose is not to be an obedient slave. Your purpose is not to be controlled by people you don't even know that don't even know you and don't even know your name and don't give a shit about you. Your purpose is not to sit at a desk nine hours a day doing bullshit that wouldn't matter if you didn't do it. And I know some of you do that kind of thing and like, well, there is a thing you do in the company. In the com- but if the, comp- if the company you work for went away, nothing would really happen. So it doesn't matter what, you, no matter how important you are to that company, if the company's not necessary to society, then neither are you in your occupation. I'm not putting you down. I'm not saying quit your job. I'll right away anyway. I'm just saying that's not your purpose. Your purpose is to find a place where your talent and your passion and your ability to provide for yourself overlap in a Venn diagram. And then design a path for yourself that keeps you in that point as much as possible. And if you do that, you won't feel like you have to work a day in your life. 